Thank you. Can we talk special meeting to order, please? Um, I think we're going to flip item B and A, so we'll go with TDC issues first. Jennifer, would you like to come up, please? Good morning. Good morning. Jennifer Jenkins, Gulf County TDC. Uh, our, t our advisory board had a meeting last week and there were three items that they unanimously approved for me to bring to you today. The first one is um, we're requesting to reprint our visitor guides, um, 15,000 quantity, we're very low and we have, we, they, we distribute at least 200 a month to um, visitors who request them but also the other um, welcome centers and places there are so we request 15,000 uh, reprints for the guides. 15,000. 15,000. So, Mr. Chair, one thing about these guides is, is even at the, at the uh, Palma City Airport, they're the, the, the most. So, uh, then, yeah. Right. Second. Okay. I have a motion, Commissioner Yeager. Second, Commissioner McDaniels. Any opposition? Motion carries through zero. Thank you. Second, Second item, we're completing our budgets for next fiscal year and we request um, the addition of another staff assistant in addition to some of the duties around marketing um, that that person will have. Primarily they will be working weekend hours to keep the Welcome Center open. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion, Commissioner Yeager. Second. Second, Commissioner McDaniels. Just for an additional. Yes, sir. My records. Any opposition? Most curious to it Thank you. And finally, um, due to the change in the cycle for the sponsorship and special funding, the Sheriff's Department requested some funding for its annual bass tournament. We do have that in the budget this year, and so we'd like to get your approval on additional funding for the tournament, which will be used for marketing outside of a $60,000, 60-mile radius. So move, Mr. Chair, it's great event. I agree. Uh, question. Uh, go ahead and second for the second. second. Then question. Okay. Uh, how much? Ten thousand dollars. Right. Good with you. Right, we have a motion, Commissioner Yeager, second Commissioner McDaniels, any opposition? Motion carries through it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, one out of two this year, Adam. Earlier, I think three or four minutes ago, the county commission agreed for Toronto Kapinski to help stick to a party with TDC. Jennifer's in now. Uh, my recommendation to you is for, for the record to reflect that Jennifer's got that department and she's got signature authority and whoever she may delegate to. Would you want to rescind Ms. Kapinski's? Yeah, and let Jennifer have it and she wants to delegate that authority to someone else. That's, that's great too, but so she'll have it. For, in order for the clerk to be clear on who has the authority to sign invoices. So moved, Mr. Chair. Uh, motion, Commissioner Lawyer. Second. Thank you, Commissioner McDaniels. Uh, Jeff, I think all the things we've gone through and what I've seen in the operations you certainly have between you and Tawan uh, orchestrate a lot of fiscal control, so I have no, I have no issue with that. Uh, any opposition? Much of curious through that. Is that it? Let's go to item A, redistricting. Mr. Lohan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this morning we've been joined by Michael Spellman of Sniffin Spellman, our special counsel on the issue of uh, redistricting in last year's uh, examination of our countywide voting. Um, if I can, I just want to provide you a recap of where we've been um, that was led up to today. Uh, last December, or actually December of 2010, January of 2011, this commission had discussed and ultimately instructed myself to reach out to special counsel. Uh, February 2011, we had retained Smith and Spelman firm to begin examining our census figures from 2000 up through 2010. Uh, during the months of March, April, and May, they had engaged Dr. Bullock from the University of Georgia and Dr. Daddy from the University of Oklahoma um, to examine our census figures uh, in both the special elections, our general elections, and our primaries. Uh, they came back, and if you all recall, last July, almost a week to the year, uh, we had Dr. Uh, Bullock and Dr. Gaddy's examination of the census figures and we had a report from uh, Michael Spellman that was presented to the county. Uh, it was actually dated July 21st of 2011. It was several pages that examined both the Gingles factors, our consent decree, um, as well as the state regulations of our special districts um, and our district-wide voting in Gulf County. Uh, following that report from Michael Spellman in July of last summer, 
uh, we proceeded with our redistricting as we were required to do in an odd year following the census figures. Um, we had our 10 year census figures. We took those numbers. We worked with the county staff in GIS mapping. Um, with your instructions, we actually noticed a special meeting that we were required to under statute in September. If you all recall, last September we had special meetings with regards to redistricting. Uh, we examined the numbers, we took feedback, we had public hearings, and we actually did a redistricting um, where we modified lines in District 2 and 3. Uh, we were required by federal and state guidelines to come within a 10% deviation of all of our population figures. We were slightly over 15,800 in our total population in Gulf County. Uh, the population per district would be approximately 3,100 per district. Uh, then we took in the final uh, element specific and unique to Gulf County, which is our consent decree that we've had for over 27 years uh, in, with regards to District 4. Um, with that being the case, we took all of our districts, we modified the numbers to get them all within a 10% standard of deviation, uh, and we ad ultimately adopted on September 27th last year a redistricting in the Gulf County. Um, we brought some of the districts closer within that 10% deviation, and we still obviously had a uh, consent decree that guided us. Uh, subsequent to September 27th last year, with your instructions, we submitted all those redistricting numbers to Tallahassee and the division of uh, the supervisor elections and the division. Uh, we sent it up in December. We confirmed in January that they had received them, which we did receive confirmation that they had received them. Um, subsequent to that, if you all recall, this February we had instructions from the Commission again to ratify and make sure that we've done everything in compliance with the consent decree on the federal level. Um, at that time, we re-engaged Sniffin and Spelman Firm, our special counsel for Redistricting and Voting Rights Act, um, and they have now since worked and gone back and examined what we've done in terms of our redistricting in the 2011 process. Um, two of the questions that came back before this Commission and to ourselves as the attorney for the county as well as special counsel was, with the question of redistricting, have we complied with the state and federal guidelines? And the second question, uh, with what we have done in 2011, are we now, should we send it up to the federal court for ratification to show that we're still consistent in protecting District 4? Um, so we pose those questions to Special Counsel uh, Michael Spellman. Um, I have with me copies of both his report from last July for you all, for your review to take with me today. I've met with uh, Mr. Spellman before today and we've discussed uh, his findings and his recommendations. He's going to be submitting a, a written uh, summary of today's comments to you all in the coming week so you all have that with his recommendations and his findings. Um, but I would like to introduce Michael Spellman to you all. Hopefully familiar with him after working with the county. Um, that's going to come up, if you would, and just uh, pick up from my summary, and uh, we'll go from there. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. For the clerk's office, could you state your name and address up there in Tallahassee, please? Uh, yes. Uh, Michael Spellman with the law firm of Sniffin and Spellman at 123 North Monroe Street, Tallahassee, Florida. Very good. Welcome. Thank you. And um, Mr. Novak uh, provided a very good summary of where we are. The narrow question that, that I really uh, want to answer first and foremost is, does your redistricting plan need to go before the federal court? And just as a matter of background, uh, this is a voter dilution claim. This was first brought back in the mid-1980s as a claim that uh, the black vote in Gulf County was diluted by what's called block majority voting, so that in a general election, the white block voting could always outvote a black candidate over a white candidate. Uh, and, and therefore, the consent decree was specifically uh, set up or, or, or intended to cure that. And in fact, you know, this was a stipulated consent decree, and uh, part of the factors that are written in there was the acknowledgement that Gulf County residents, uh, that there was vote voter dilution for black citizens in Gulf County. I give all that to you as a matter of background because what your redistricting process did in this case was not touch the district which has been protected by the federal court. It left it uh, intact, it left it alone. It changed the numbers in other districts, but it did not change District 4. And for that reason, I do not believe that this needs to go before the federal court uh, for approval at this time. Uh, I would also say that from a matter of practicality, it would be, uh, it would not behoove the county to put it in front of the federal court at this time. You've had uh, qualifying of candidates in other districts where lines have been drawn. You have a primary where I think absentee ballots are probably already been mailed out. You're, you have three weeks to go. 
and you have um, uh, the, the primary election and then the general election set up. So putting this in front of a federal court right now is neither necessary nor practical uh, for purposes of, of your redistricting plan. That's the first question. The next question is a little bit more complicated. Uh, when, we, when we looked at this a year ago, uh, and when we had Dr. Bullock and Dr. Gaddy look at this, we were studying the three Gingles factors. The, the three factors are that uh, first, there has to be a uh, minority group sufficiently large and geographically compact to constitute a majority in a single member district. Secondly, that that minority group is politically cohesive. And third, that the minority preferred candidate is usually defeated by white majority block voting. Now, for purposes of the study, we, the, the, the experts essentially um, assumed that the minority group was politically cohesive. And then really looks to see from precinct to precinct whether or not the white preferred voter um, the, the, the voter, the candidate preferred by white voters would win in a general election. Understand, this is not about what race the candidate is. It, what matters here is the preferred uh, candidate by the race of the voter. So you can imagine that, uh, and, and as the study, as our July 21, 2011 report talked about, in most cases, and in the South, it is generally recognized that African Americans will prefer a Democratic candidate white voters will prefer a Republican candidate. And so those are some of the assumptions because, you know, we don't know the exact identity of what voter is voting for what candidate. So you have to look at precincts and the racial constitution and not only the population, but who the voting, um, the, the voting require, uh, the population is and those types of things. The, uh, in looking at your redistricting numbers, uh, the first Gingles factor uh, about geographic compactness uh, maybe at issue, uh, and I say maybe because uh, we don't know, but it, it looks like there's been a lot of trending. Uh, certainly the population has changed since 1984 or 1986, uh, but there has certainly been, it looks like, a shift in the population. And it may be worth uh, looking at, now you know as well as anybody that you can only redistrict in an odd numbered year. We're going to be coming on a general election where uh, some of the data that, that we reviewed from 2004 to 2010 will be largely confirmed or dispelled. We, uh, you know, we'll be looking at a, candidate, a presidential race uh, where there may be uh, a racial identification for voting. And so there are a lot of uh, factors or there, there are a lot of uh, results that will come out of this 2012 election together with the population trending that I saw from your redistricting numbers and the scenarios that may very well be worth going back and doing uh, a review of the redistricting. And if that is the county's wish, and I will spell this out in a letter, I would uh, recommend that that be done immediately into 2013 because this is a long process. And it may be, it may very well be that District 4 needs to be reviewed uh, as to whether it is geographically compact or not. And in that case, we will have to go before a federal court and get approval, and we will probably have to engage in dialogue with the groups that will likely uh, want to be reviewing this very, very carefully. It might include the Americans with Civil Liberties Union. It might very well include the NAACP. I don't know. These are just things we're used to when we see these th things in other counties or in other um, state races. So that's just something that's out there in the future. I don't think that's something that you need to decide today, uh, but, but I put that out there. But, but again, the initial question of do we need to, to package this up and go before a federal judge and say, here's our redistricting plan for 2012, will you approve it? I don't think that is necessary at this time. Any questions from the board? Yes. Go ahead. Um, Ms. Bellman, thank you again for coming. Thank you for representing our county. I have some issues here with this. Uh, public record, I'm for, I support countywide voting. And uh, the reasons I feel like under the countywide system, everybody's treated equal. And by the way, the process we have right now, we have more or less five little tribes, let's just say that. We're just talking layman's terms. But I, I'm in strong belief that we should all be in the same boat. And, and uh, countywide, I would love to, if I can sit here 
as a county commissioner, and I can put a tax, affect this gentleman right out here's taxes. He should have the right to give me an up or down vote. We've passed, since I've been on this board, we have passed ordinances. People have the right to vote. Maybe some of them were popular, they were good, there wasn't some here or there. But I just can't see that we're holding this back, and we've got this federal decree hanging over our head. This county, you go back in the history of Gulf County, we were the first county in the state of Florida that we never bust a child in this county. Our schools here in uh, Port St. Joe and we were Hitchcock. The buildings are round, thanks to the Ford Foundation. They didn't want any end, just a continuous circle. We're all in our churches. And this is, this is, in my opinion, this is strictly an opinion. This has nothing to, it's not a, anything to do with a race. I don't have any color issues, never have. But I want to be where I can go over and, and you check the voting uh, records that, uh, uh, look at mine, these other commissioners and my colleague, uh, Commissioner Smiley here, he and I came on this board together. 99, probably 100% of our vote if Mr. Smiley has an issue, we support him, and same with others. But I want to be where I feel like that that district is just as I can represent it just as equally as I can the district that I represent in up in uh, District Two. Likewise, uh, we, I just don't see uh, the, uh, the only thing I see here, and, and again, this is just an opinion of mine, is the fact that we've got. Some people that want to promote a segregation issue in this county, and I, for them, I don't know if it's a personal gain or what, but when we go, we're all under the same umbrella, then we all get treated equal. The north end of the county, the south end of the county, we're all equal, and we're together. This has nothing to do. We, we've proven that uh, uh, in our elections right here within this county. I know. Uh, a friend of mine sitting in the back here, uh, Ms. Shirley Jenkins. Let me just use her and I'll use it because she's here. She, to my knowledge, the only, uh, the only official up for real, uh, up for real election this year, she drew no opposition. Nobody has touched her because she does a wonderful job. People this day and time, people are smart. They're not, uh, you don't, they're not like herded animals. They can think. And, the people, all of them, someone to do a good job, they don't care. But I just, uh, I can't, for my personal opinion on this, that we need to, to lift this cloud off. When 80%, I hear what you're saying, Mr. Spellman. I respect your law firm highly. It's what you want to find this law firms in Tallahassee. I've done some research on you. You are. You're a very respectable law firm, you Mr. Stephan. But when 80% of the people in this county, and the, these, this board here, we are the spokespersons for these people sitting right out here. Now, are we to ignore their wishes? We represent them. They put us up here, and they say, you know, I hear, so, well, you're sandbagging, and you're starting. No, we're not. We went through a process with you. This can't happen overnight. It takes so long, and, we, and if we miss one step on the wrong, then we've got to start all over and go again. So we're trying to take it, the steps as we need to take to proceed with this. But I've got to listen to the people, and the people say we're willing, and then they come up, and it's, nothing's free. We fought for this country in 1776, and that was 13 years later before the Constitution was signed, something like that. I've got to go back and remember history. But we're willing, they say. We're willing, that, you know, you can tell them, but one thing about figures, you can throw uh, figures out any way you want them. If I want them high, I'll throw them high. If I want them low, I'll throw them low. So uh, we really don't know that we get to the bottom line on that. But I've asked people and told people, they're willing to make sacrifices to go for this. And I'd dare them say that anyone seeking a political office or holding a political office that would go a route that cause one, this county one penny, of extra additional tax money would be in, surely in some serious trouble mm -hmm. if they would ever seek election in this county, probably any county. But anyway, having said, I want, I'm 100% for 
doing away with this federal recruit. Now, once we do away, I don't like this cloud hanging over us. Once it's gone, then we still, it's up to the county where they want to stay single or go countywide. I want to lift this off. I don't like this hanging over my head as an elected official and the people out here. Now, we could probably, I'm going to ask that, you probably take a straw vote right here. I mean, he's willing to make a sacrifice to unite this county. And I don't know what it would be, and I'm not going to ask that. But anyway, I think I, I, that's been really heavy on me. I know it's been, we this process has been drawn out quite a bit, and it may be more. But we need to get this little small, we're only 15,000, 16,000 of us, and we're all on the same thing. Like, again, like our churches are integrated. I, uh, uh, we have interracial marriage in this county. Yesterday I sat in church, a uh, uh, black gentleman sang a beautiful song, everybody gave him a standing ovation. We don't, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with trying to box anybody in. We don't want that. We want us all to be equal. We want to all be equal here. And to keep there in this district, now we've got a district right now that's a minority district with minorities. They need to come out. And if Gulf County, when it booms, it's coming back. We're coming. But people can live anywhere. You go down Long Avenue, Garrison Avenue, up in Weaver Hitchcock, for sale sign, it doesn't say this is restricted here. Anybody can. Anybody. And that's what it is. We're in a new time and era. Look at our football teams. Half of our championships right here in this uh, community. Where'd it come from? Our football, baseball, all of them. Yes, sir. We all cheer them. We're behind them 100%. But anyway, having said that, maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll shed a little light on the people here, but we truly need to get this thing behind us, get this federal decree off. If you say the redistricting, you said 2013 would be a perfect time to go for it, well then, whatever we got to do these steps, we need to do it. And you will give us a report, and I will read it, and it will be out for the general public, too. I, I, will it be for the public, too? Y yes, sir. Okay, all right. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Any other comments from the board? I would like to comment on Mr. Uh, Smiley. Um, nothing towards Mr. McDaniels. So we're looking at a different set of eyes. And the eyes he's looking out of, you can see that kind of why it will work. Because that now the comments that's been ready to come out of my mouth, lots of people's not gonna like those comments and when it comes down to election, that means I don't get a vote. But now if I got a job where I just Represent the people, don't make no decisions, take a book and go by the rules in this book and just make sure I stay on the rules of this book. It's hard to make somebody mad at me because I'm going by what the book said do. But right now I'm a politician. I do not support kind of white voting. Right now I cannot get a, a minority to run for a position on the city of Pope St. Joe simply because they said they would not win. And I'm like, we haven't gave it a chance yet. Put your name on the ballot. But what, Ted? You're not going to win. This is what I hear. This is the life I live in. St. Joe, and I can tell you right now, St. Joe and we run is two different places, but we're in the same county. I'm going to step real hard. I, I know the things that I'm going to say are probably going to help me, but I'm not saying. In St. Joe, we got a black cemetery, a white cemetery. And we walk, they got a mixed cemetery. I walked in that cemetery and I was very sure. You see more interracial things going on in we walk than you see going on in St. Joe. If I can sit here and tell you some of the things that are going to happen in my district, not what somebody have told me, but the things that I have seen with my own eyes. People come over there, the police come over and make them lay on the ground and put guns to the head. White individuals sitting up talking to people doing nothing and the police is coming over and spraying down with mace because he's sitting there. A white friend of mine bring me fish. He gets stopped on the way going back home. So we're looking at two different side of eyes here. Don't get me wrong. We got a bunch of good people in Gulf County. White and black. But we got some bad holes that uh, this law, the decree was put in place to keep them in place. 
That's the reason laws is like that is put in place. I don't agree with somebody living way on the other end of the county coming in my district, in my neighborhood, telling me what I need who never visit my neighborhood. Now, you come to me and ask me a person who represents me and he can represent me, I'm, I'm all for that. And we can work together like me and Mr. Mike Daniel. We always work together. He come to me, he showed me a little spot, telling me a little spot about town. We need to try to do something over here to help these people. I don't have no problem with that, trying to help somebody. That's what I'm up here for. But you cannot compare certain jobs as a politician. We just proved that, but Tuesday when we had the meeting, the protests that was going on, you're going to have people on both sides of it. So that's going to happen. But when you take a good look out of my eyes of what's going on, we get jobs back in my city and sit up on St. Joe, the people will come back to St. Joe. If we quit making it so hard for a person to open a business, it took me eight months to get my daycare open. The first time I ever opened my daycare, I paid rent of $1,300 for four months before I was allowed to bring a kid in the store. Four months of rent of $1,300. For four months before I was allowed to bring a kid in the door. Those kind of things got to be relaxed. If we can get jobs back up in here, we can get people to open up jobs, hire 15, 20 people. This district will grow. When the prison system came in here, the majority of the people went to the prison system to start working, so they moved out the county, into the county. Every meal is closed down, the prison system's open. We got to get together and try to get some jobs in here. And quit making it so hard. For a small man to come in here and want to open a business. I do not support county-wide voting. I support district voting. I do not represent, I represent District 4, but I am a county commissioner. And if anybody got a problem going on in their district, I will step in there and we'll see can we get it fixed. I'm going to talk to the commissioner over that problem. Well, if I see that he ain't doing the job, we'll get it fixed because I represent the whole county too. So I'm not just a district commissioner. I'm a county commissioner. When I ran for this position, I put down running for county commissioner, not district commissioner. So what I'm saying, the only thing that I'm saying about this kind of wide, I feel like to go kind of wide, this kind of going to be stepping back in the 60s. As of right now, you got district voting going on with the school board. You got a minority sitting there. You got district voting in the county. You got a minority sitting there. You have kind of wide in Rewa. You have kind of wide in St. Joe. No minorities. It don't take four years to put that together and see something ain't right. I, my thing is, we want District 4 to grow. This, it relaxes this here. Let the city and the county come together and start working on these things and let people come in and bring in small businesses. What can we do to set a plate and set a table to invite somebody to come in that want to put a business up. What can we do for you for the next 10 years for you to put 50 people to work, 25 people to work? What would it take to make this happen? Let's sell ourselves. Not when a man come in and want to open a business, he got to go through three months of paper, three months of litigation. Now he's tired, he don't even want the business. Ask me how I know. I'm a business owner, and I've been going through the devil. I was told when I first opened up my business, when I first opened up my car wash back in 19, it was back in 78, uh, not 78, back in 98, 1998. I was told by the clerk of the city to take my business to the north side of town. And this is what I was told. you tell me we don't need a district? But we pushed and pushed and pushed on. We argued, we argued, we fussed, we fussed. We finally got the business open. Then I caught the devil with my daycare. Like I said, four months of $1,300 a month. How long can he wait before we 
from things that not open up that business. It's hard to open up a business when you got so many people pushing against you. It's hard. It's very hard. I do not support kind of white voting. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Smiley. We've had two in passion, please. Mr. Yeager, do you have a comment? Sure. Uh, you know, and, and that's what I was going to say. This this is a, a passionate issue for, for many people, many people in the community. And uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's been dividing and divisive for, for an awful long time. That's why I think the procedures that we followed have been the right procedures. We've engaged the attorneys. I think what, what uh, we're trying to do is somehow get this back to the federal courts without it costing the taxpayer an arm and a leg and getting the federal courts to, to help guide us as to our, our, is this still needed in our community. Somehow do a, 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 a review of this without the expense uh, of the last report that, that we spent. So I think at the end of the day, that's what I want to accomplish. I want to bring this thing back to the courts, let the courts review it, but not be a passionate plea from from uh, us or from from the community, but it be a review uh, of the courts. A review of this consent decree, and whether we do that through uh, bringing our district's uh, lines back to the courts and say, are we still, uh, do we still uh, comply with this consent decree? Yeah, you know, and what, the, what that review process and how that review process proceeds is exactly why we've, we've uh, got this gentleman here before us today. So I think at the end of the day, uh, that's how I'd like to see it reviewed. Uh, and that, that's where we're at. Well, and I think, uh, I mean, I agree with all the comments that obviously come across the table. The issue that I think you've asked is basically two things. One, recommendation that, that this um, uh, redistricting that we went through uh, not be sent to the federal court at this particular time. Um, because it, to me, and, I, I, and I'm not trying to play a lawyer, but I agree with him that it doesn't bring any bearing to this current election. When we had last met with you, um, looking at the, the, to me, the analytical and s sort of the, the, the methodology that has to be used is this. I mean, Commissioner Yoke is correct. You have to take the emotion out of the process. You know, you have to go, is it fair? Are the things that Commissioner Smiley is articulating, it's very true. There's not a minority sitting on uh, the uh, city board. I, you know, is that uh, a disadvantage in the election process? But none of us, for example, we know what our constituents want. Our constituents want to go to countywide voting. We have supported that uh, outright. As he said, there's going to be pros and cons of that on both sides. That being said, we're not in the in the judge or the legal area. These Gingle tests that you're speaking of, this criterion is very specific. And having to trust that to the federal judge that put us under that to begin with, obviously when that was under a stipulated agreement, it, it, there was a problem, you know. But I think where we are now is that that has not been reviewed in 20 plus something years. Um, and when you articulated in the last uh, meeting with us some of the voting results and some of the standards and patterns that made or may not made sense to me, the judge and the legal team has to represent that. So, in my opinion, we take it to the next level. We get it to the federal court so that we can do it. That's the only thing that's going to happen. Um, that being said, I don't want to disenfranchise me. He and I went to high school together. We've known each other, you know, it's like a hundred years. It's not that what we feel and what we've seen is that it's 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 to the judge and to a fairness and to a due process that this board has to walk through. And I think that's the most. Uh, I guess the only way we can do it. Our job is to run it through the process. Um, but anyway, with that, is there any other comments you have? And then I'll turn to the public. You know, all I would say is that the, the last analysis we did uh, was really one that looked at what was your likelihood of success against what was your risk. And uh, we dealt with uh, numbers that uh, really looked at uh, the 2004 through 2010 election cycle. We did not have the census uh, trends or the numbers that I've seen from your redistricting data. And that may change uh, the way that this looks in front of a federal judge. At that time, we recommended that you not go uh, uh, and try to uh, get into countywide, that you had uh, less than a 50% chance of winning, uh, that it could be expensive. But I think 
seen what this 2012 election data looks like as soon as it is done. I mean, today uh, the data is, is, you know, ready for you almost immediately. And there is no emotion or intent in these cases. This all comes down to how numbers play out That's without right. regard to any intent. The other thing I would say just simply about um, whether or not there is a, a white on, on this board or that board. Again, it, it, it doesn't necessarily matter the race of, of the elected official. It matters uh, what, what the voters, the race of the voters prefer. So in the event that uh, a race is, is between two whites, uh, the precinct data, the, the polling data, looks at precincts that are majority African American and who their preferred candidate was as compared to polling data in uh, uh, where the, the majority of the voters are white. Uh, so so the, the view is a little bit more uh, uh, detailed than simply the race of those sitting up at the dais. Finally, uh, this 2012 election, while uh, there are state and federal races at issue, there's also a lot of countywide uh, uh, elected officials that run, clerk of court, property appraiser, superintendent of schools. And uh, again, looking at polling data from uh, uh, you know, a, uh, an area where there is a majority of African American voters and looking at an area where there's a majority of white voters and seeing if the candidates are the same or are they different. These are the types of things. Uh, Commissioner Yeager, as to the expense, we're not going to have to redo the 2004 to 2010, the numbers are the numbers. I think looking, I think this focus, if we, if we go about it, we'll be looking at the 2012 election data and then looking at the census trending data of the population because from what I could view, there was a, a fairly significant shift, and that's all I'll say. Well, I think going back to what you're, I think, implying here as well, is that we have the data that basically put us at, you know, less than a 50% chance. Based on the, uh, basically the analysis that you'll do after the 12 election, you know, we'll have substantial data that can dispel or approve and put us in a better position in front of that federal judge, correct? It'll both do that and it will look at that first Gingles factor that we really did not pay attention to because we didn't have the census data. You know, what is the geographic compactness of, of District 4 versus other districts at this time? And I think that's a, some very relevant data. You know, there's the three Gingles factors. That third one is where everybody really concentrates. Uh, but you have to prove all three before you, you know, even get to the next step. And, and the reason we're doing this uh, sort of upfront and not going before the, the, the federal court without doing it is it's going to be the county's burden of proof to get from under this, you know, th from under this consent decree. The stipulations were made 30 years ago. You inherit those as a board to get out from under that cloud, if you will, um, you have to show that times have changed in 30 years, and the way you show times have changed are through numbers. And that's just, this is a very statistically driven, again, no intent, no emotion, it's just the numbers, and that's what the court will be looking at. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, it sounds like that, that he's giving us a path forward, and that's after this, these, these next elections, so that's uh, a recommendation that I think that at the end of the day we'll have to uh, make a decision on it at some point. I agree. Uh, anyone, anyone from the public want to speak? Mr. Ross? Would you state your name and address for the record, please? Good morning. Uh, Gary Ross, 420 Treasure Drive, uh, Fort St. Joe. Uh, I want to say first, I'm not here representing Workforce Board. I'm representing Gary. Um, I want to kind of look at a way to move forward with this, and the Commissioner Smiley have had this conversation. <coughs> he is concerned about this uh, going to countywide voting that you can't get people elected to office. And he may or may not be right with that, but I've suggested a way to start attacking that. Right now, we don't know who the leaders are in the North Port St. Joe community or Mr. McDaniel up in your area, and I've suggested to Tan that he start bringing forward people and getting them on boards and commissions in the county and the city level so that two things happen. They learn how the city and the county works, and the people in the rest of the community learn who they are. I think this is a good way to start moving forward and bringing forth candidates that can actually win, whether it's at a district level or at a county level or at the city level. So that's my suggestion, and I've had this conversation with Tan. And uh, I will say also that I am in his community, and he knows this. A lot of really, really positive things are happening over there, and I want to have this continue. He's been tremendously supportive, and I want to continue with that too. 
Also with uh, Commissioner Yeager, he's put together a stakeholders group in Gulf County. Uh, Mr. Eddie Fields from, from Northport St. Joe is on that group, and we would look and be happy to have even more members from that community. So my suggestion is let's get more people involved so we can learn who they are, they can learn who and how the county and city works. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, if I can, I just wanted to uh, call off on some of Michael's comments. And, and Commissioner McDaniel, you had mentioned earlier uh, the process that's been followed up to this point. Um, it, and we're here sitting here in July of 2012. You know, there was a dis discussion in December of 2010 and January 2011 amongst the commission of where to go and how to proceed. And there was a vote amongst this commission. Um, the first question that was asked last year was, in light of the consent decree that had been instituted for over, almost three decades in Gulf County, was it still in effect? And, and based upon that, should it be something that the, the county should approach the courts and have it re-examine that? Um, last summer, you all received an answer from Mr. Spellman, and he provided that report to you all. And he, he summarized it in one paragraph where he gave his recommendations that at the time it was less than likely or 50% 50, 50 probability that you would all succeed in court. And on top of that, the cost to the county, despite those chances of not succeeding in your challenge to the consent decree. Since that time, we've gone through a redistricting process that we're required by statute to do. And now a second question has come to Michael that you've all asked. And that is, in light of your redistricting process that you've all followed, uh, taking into consideration both federal and state factors, the Gingles factors, the three factors that Michael's spoken about, and on top of that, the consent decree, you've taken all four of those elements, have redistricted Gulf County on a 10-year period and have submitted those to the state. The question now is, in light of that redistricting, should you present those results to the uh, federal court? And Michael's here again today telling you that it is not appropriate, nor is it prudent to do that this time. One of the things that have come through this process over the last year and a half, and I, and I applaud you all for asking the questions first, asking for a legal examination before racing to a court, and asking the question that you don't know or getting a recommendation on the answer before you do it. You've taken the time, you've invested and gotten an expert report from Mr. Spellman, but something's come through the process. Last year you asked the first question, he gave you an answer. We're sitting here today, you've asked the second question, he's giving you an answer. But through this process, there has been some results in census figures, and there's been a dynamic change in Gulf County that's been established over the last 10 years. The census figures that they've examined through Dr. Bullock and Dr. Gaddy and Mr. Spellman have shown there's been changes in Gulf County. They don't support going to the courthouse, as Mr. Spellman has indicated, because there's not a likely a probability that there will be a successful outcome based on what you all have requested. But there has been changes in Gulf County over the last 10 years, dynamic changes in each of the districts, population changes. Um, we go down each of the districts. District 1, you have 2,896 uh, citizens. District 2, you have 2,556 citizens. District 3, you have 2,583 citizens. District 4, you have 1,821. And District 5, you have 2,706,000 ,006 citizens. In Gulf County right now, we have 15,800 citizens, and there's a standard deviation of 10% in each of those districts. And with the state and federal guidelines telling us to go out and get them within a 10% margin of one another, we've accomplished that in large part in four of our districts. But we've taken that consent decree into consideration each time we've done this redistricting, and that's obviously 27% outside that standard of deviation. The numbers that have changed over the last 10 years and that dynamic change, which Michael's speaking to, is this year you have our primaries coming up in two weeks. You have a general election coming up in the fall. We've had special election results. We also have a presidential election this fall. There is significant data that will be taken both on the federal, state, and local level that can be taken into consideration as well. With the trending that Michael has referred to over the last year, there's been significant trending in Gulf County. There have been dynamic population shifts in non-Hispanic black, in the Hispanic, in the white, all the population bases in Gulf County have changed over the last 10 years. Based on that, and I've heard Michael, when we've spoken, he's recommended that the, this, the redistricting that has been recently completed by Gulf County not be submitted to the federal court for ratification. But if there's a re-examination based on the trending, it's something for this commission to consider going forward. Um, we're right in the middle of a primary and election cycle right now. There's considerable data that I think is going to be accumulated. Uh, Linda Griffin and John Hanlon have been extremely helpful in the last year gathering all this data on the local level. And the data that was examined by Gaddy, Bullock, and Michael was from 2004 through 2010. If you take into consideration the next 24 months, we have a, 
a wealth of population and election data that will be available to us. Um, under Statute 124 in Florida, we have the ability on odd years to go out and examine the numbers. It doesn't need to be every 10 years. Under Statute 124, you as a five city and county commissioners have the ability to go out and be examined and redistrict. Um, the three English factors that Michael is speaking to, again, he, he can go through, but that is the guidelines that we follow in examining whether or not this is, and, and if you would, Michael, I think it would be very helpful for you to go through all three so that the commission can hear as well as the public. Um, these are the factors that are taken into consideration of what you all do as a group, um, and it's something we follow. Michael's going to provide a written summary to you all in the coming weeks, and I would encourage you all to take that. We could put it on the county website. Um, but I just wanted to comment on Mr. McDaniel had indicated earlier that this process that we've gone through, that there's been criticism or comments that this is somehow, uh, uh, I believe, a smokescreen, I think, or it is not in true intent. I think you've gone through the proper steps in terms of legal evaluation of where you're at. You've heard Michael's comments, um, an expert in the Voting Rights Act. But if you can, Michael, I'd, I'd ask you if you can, review the Gingles factors so that the commissioners know, that the public knows. Um, and then the next step would be to take that summary in and examine his summary, and then you guys can all decide what would be the next proper and prudent steps to take. The Gingles, what, what that refers to is a case that was decided by the United States Supreme Court in 1986. It was four years after the Voting Rights Act had been amended by Congress in 1982, and the decision it was Thornburg v. Gingles. The court established three factors which a person must establish in order to prove a voter dilution claim under Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, which is exactly what the consent decree was based upon. First, that a minority group is sufficiently large and geographically compact to constitute a majority in a single member district. Second, the minority group is politically cohesive. And third, the minority preferred candidate is usually defeated by white majority block voting. These three factors have all been analyzed by courts uh, all over the country. This area, the Southeast, uh, the 11th Circuit, 11th Federal uh, Circuit Court of Appeals includes Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, and they have faced all sorts of different consent decrees, redrawing of lines both from the congressional side to the state legislative to even the county side uh, in all three states in many different scenarios. And, and they go through and they explain what these, these terms mean. I mean, sufficiently large and geographically compact can take up several pages of a court's decision. There's plenty of precedent out there. You take that precedent, you run these numbers, and you find out. You find out what happens. But, but what we do know, what we already know without even looking at the specifics, are that in 30 years there has been a population shift um, specific to, this in, uh, to, to the entire county, and then the trending of where people move within different geographical areas of the county have gone on. Have those been taken into consideration? Perhaps, but perhaps not enough. And I think that is what we will be focusing on. Uh, that and the, 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 thir the first factor and the third factor are what we'd really be looking at with the 2012 uh, data to see, you know, is this something that we can uh, have some success in going before a federal court? Well, I think the bottom line, gentlemen, is that, you know, we, we've all articulated our issues on this, or our feelings about it. Bottom line is we've got a recommendation from you not to send it because the strategy had always been get it before the federal court, as you indicated, Commissioner McDaniels, so that we could have a review. But to emotionally run up there without this preponderance of evidence that you're speaking of and going through that gauntlet is a fruitless trail. So I mean, I feel like we get the data from 12, we move forward, um, and we let the courts decide. You know, I don't think that our data we've made a privy with the state, but is that where everybody is? Everybody comfortable? That's and and, and uh, Chairman, if I can just, um, in general, give sort of a roadmap. What I think happens is we, we get this data from 2012 and we immediately analyze it and the census data. Uh, we look at these factors and then we, again, make a recommendation to right. you. Uh, and if we are going to proceed forward, then we start the dialogue and we start the proceedings, always keeping in mind that any redistricting that, that can be done by this commission can only be done by December 31 of an odd-numbered year. So that uh, we are well in front of this and well in front of a federal court so that qualifying and all the other things that go into the even-numbered year 
we're timely, we're not getting in a, we're, we're not getting in a bind. And so, you know, approaching it from that aspect, knowing that the technology is such, we've already got 2004 to 2010, we just need to get this 12 data, I, I think it's something that we would be able to um, accomplish and accomplish timely. What I propose to do is present to you a roadmap in writing that uh, I can either appear again or Mr. Novak can, can present it on my behalf uh, to see if you want to accept that recommendation and, and we can go from there. I agree with that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank Next you, day, I'm, yes. One other thing, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, the numbers came out and, and uh, the key to this thing, thing to this uh, address is, is the word number. It's a numbers game. It's, it's not a personality game. It's a numbers game. And when we look over back uh, in the uh, 2000 census, District 3, 4, and 5 were at approximately 1,800 more people in District 1 and 2. The 2010 census, that 1,800 number has dropped to 800. So that explains there is a geographical change. And you look here, so that's when I came on the district that I represented had the most people. And if we defer it, put some inmates in, which that was tried somewhere else. It, it, it would have double everything, but we that don't do that. But the bottom line is, so the only way with this with this decree that we have, the only to try to balance uh, and the two districts, the three districts grew from 2000 to 2010. That was District 5. It picked up a little bit. District 1 and District Two, which is in the north end of the county, really accelerated. Mm -hmm. Two districts dropped. Beaches, District 3, and right here in Port St. Joe, District 4, which this district pretty much is within the, the voting people over within the city of Port St. Joe. Maybe a handful. But anyway, we really, so we have to try to draw these lines to balance. The only way we could balance, I needed uh, District 3 needed to come up. Mr. Do need to come down, so Commissioner Williams and I, not that I didn't, I love the people I know street, but that's the only way we could go because we couldn't touch District 4. You know, it needed to grow, but it either had to go into 3, 5, or, you understand what I'm saying there? I do, sir. It's a numbers game, and that's the key to this whole thing, is to get the numbers and get the people right. But uh, having said, Mr. Chairman, do we need... Uh, do we need a motion to continue this or, or to I definitely I mean for his research I mean I think the roadmap that you're defining um, I mean obviously I think we're engaging you to uh, basically uh, analytically and from uh, statistical modeling as soon as that 12 data comes in do we need to do anything beyond that I would, I would wait for Mr. Spong's report okay. um, once we have that I'll introduce it circulate it to you and to the public and then you will put it on the agenda in the coming uh, cycle Okay. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you Ladies. for your time. Any uh, public comment before we close? Motion to adjourn. Don't move.